I really feel sorry for new Blender users because there are so many features that are packed into Blender and before you even learn how to delete the default cube, 10 more features are added to Blender. Now we have been talking about the new geometry node a few days ago and just now they have added more updates to that. We're going to talk about that in a few seconds but I'm so excited about the new asset browser because you know I make 3D models for a living and I have a lot of uh, models so the asset browser is going to allow me to organize my assets are quite a lot so before we talk about the new update for the geometry now let's dive in into how the new asset browser works the first thing i'm going to do with this asset browser i've always wanted to do this so much so if you get the asset browser make sure you open any project you have in blender because this is the most satisfying thing to do uh, with blender make sure you have some objects in your scene a project file you have worked on or download this project file that i'm going to leave a link in the description and uh, what i want you to do is select everything then hit x delete them and then shift a and add a default cube that is amazing this is what blender is made for and, and if you want to make this into an asset all you have to do is, is switch to the new asset browser editor and then you can go to your outliner right click and then id data and mark asset this will turn any object you have in your scene into an asset and you can see now we have the default cube set as an asset which should be the first step we all take so now you can just drag and drop as many default cubes in your scene uh, rather than just deleting them as you have always done and uh, yeah now i'm going to have to delete them all over again but uh, uh, so if you want to add more objects so if we say have a monkey head here you can just let me see if we can drag and drop I think this should be a feature where you can just drag and drop directly into this area so that that is added in. Uh, but uh, you, you just have to right click the object in the outliner and then ID data, and then mark asset. And uh, to get rid of any of the objects in the asset library, you just have to right click on it and then let that. Or you can just go into the asset, into the outliner. Uh, every object you have added into the asset library will be given this icon here, this cloud icon to indicate that is included in the asset library. And if you want to remove it again, you can either use uh, the asset browser uh, editor or you can just do it here uh, by just going into ID data, clear asset, and uh, that will get rid of it here. And uh, it will remove also the, the cloud icon that indicates that uh, that is in the asset library. So you're not only limited to objects, you can also have uh, collections. Uh, let's uh, add the default cube, add another uh, torus, like so. Let's uh, turn on random colors. Yeah, so if you have this under a collection, move to new collection. You can also select the collection and uh, go under ID data and mark and then you just have to drag into your scene and uh, that should uh, give you your assets. Assets you add in this session are going to be limited to this car current Blender file. Uh, so if we open a new Blender project here and try to access uh, this library of assets we have added, let's also just add in a few extra objects. I wish they add an option to add and the assets through right clicking so uh, let me you can even have select multiple objects at once and then add them into uh, assets at once like that so if you wanted to access these assets in another project uh, let's change to the editor asset you see we don't see any of these in uh, uh, this asset library because uh, we have uh, this option turned on show the assets currently available in this blender session uh, so if you want this to be accessible in other blender project file all you have to do is go under change this from current uh, to default and uh, this will give you an error if you haven't set up uh, the asset library so you have to go under preferences edit preferences and uh, set up uh, where your asset library should be linked to so you have to go under file path and then select where the default asset library should go so you can create you, you can even create multiple asset libraries so i can have this call this uh, my library and uh, just select create a new path uh, where you want uh, that library to be i would recommend you create a, a folder in a location that is not going to be easily deleted because if you lose that are you going to lose others assets as well so i'm just going to create a new library here and call this library now i just have to 
accept that path and uh, save preferences add these as assets because they're already assets in the library you can't add assets uh, twice so if you try to add uh, assets into an asset library when they're already assets in a library i would get this error but i think we should be able to add uh, different assets in different library and not get an error because yes i may want this in this uh, library but i may also want them in this other library so this shouldn't be an issue but uh, i think this is since this is work in progress and they might change that in the future so i'm going what i'm going to do is first remove these uh, from the asset library so clear asset and now re-add them into the asset library uh id data mark asset i think this is functionality that is coming in the future because right now if you try to add them uh, they will not be added they will still be going to the default or current uh, session so so that's the asset library for you but there's still more exciting features are uh, that you can look into by going to builder.blender.org slash download uh, to download the latest build of blender or you can experiment with uh, experimental builds uh, by going into the experimental branches and look at uh, the different uh, branches uh, that are being worked on that are too unstable or too early in the in progress to go into the daily builds there are so many new features are uh, coming up you can see that the new file browser also now supports windows shortcuts for example if you had a shortcut on your desktop so let me just say it my library shortcut so let's go to models and add a shortcut send to desktop get a shortcut now i can just easily access that uh, by going under uh, let's say open and i can now go to the desktop directly and uh, just select select the shortcuts Menu, so you can have all your folders in one area and uh, all your shortcuts in one area and uh, just navigate uh, to that now this is this looks like a very simple uh, update but uh, it can speed up your workflow it's very very important as well so yeah i can is you can use shortcuts now in the file browser which which is a feature that was not available we can conclude this update video without talking about pablo dobaro's sculpting tools he has made this tool that you can use to delete parts of mesh called mesh fairing and uh, this can be animated as well uh, this this feature can be very great for making rocks uh, because uh, if you just slice parts of the mesh uh, like that part by part you can end up with a nice looking rocks if you look at uh, rock sculpting you see this feature used a lot in different uh, 3d application so it's a great news to be added into blender as well you can also use it to erase details on different meshes you can see it simply dissolves parts of uh, that mesh and remember this is all animatable so you can bring back those those faces by just using a slider like you see him are uh, doing here so a lot of amazing functionality and uh, if you're not following Pablo Dobaro I uh, should be especially if you are if you are into blender sculpting they've also improved and added new features to the geometry nodes editor now including support for trees and flowers uh, so you can easily scatter uh, different assets uh, like trees and flowers in your scene easily using the geometry node and they have provided this file uh, that you can find so i'll be leaving this link uh, so that you can download uh, that file you just go to this page and uh, and just click uh, this here to download uh, that project see what kind of features they have added so yeah that's it for today and uh, i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching